Hello, how's everyone doing? Happy New Year. So today is actually January the 1st, 2023. And uh, it's been a while since I made a video. I had some time today. So I figure I'd uh, work on some props and stuff that I've had on the back burner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and coat a, uh, a helmet in resin. I already did one and I figured I'd bring you guys along for the ride when uh, I do the next one. So if you've ever had questions on resin and how to put resin on helmets and stuff like that. So what I usually do for the most part, I don't do this on uh, helmets that are cast, slush cast or what have you out of resin or, or plastic already. Okay, I mostly do this to the 3D printed helmets. So a 3D printed helmet comes out of the printer uh, in pretty bad shape sometimes. Okay, so they need a lot of work. All right, I mean, yeah, this is looking great already, but I mean, it does need a lot of work to uh, get it prepped for paint. Okay, obviously it's got a lot of, uh, you know, stuff from the supports and stuff that you gotta peel off. It requires a lot of sanding and what have you. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's, it's a pain to get 3D printed parts ready for, for paint. So what I, I found is that I use, uh, I sand, you know, I go through the process of sanding and then filling the bigger imperfections or any big divots or holes or craters in the, in the print. But then I go ahead and hit it with a, a resin. And once that hardens, you have a nice smooth surface that can be sanded down and it turns it basically into a hard plastic, which is what you want. And, and for the most part, it gets rid of most of the layer lines. Okay. So I'd say about... 90% of the work will be done once you throw this layer on top. So that's that's the point. This here is a uh, Iron Man helmet. I've already put the resin on it. So you can see that it's uh, it's pretty smooth. It looks much better. And I've already sanded it down. This is all the way ready for, uh, for primer. Okay. So this is just ready for primer. I've already sanded it all down. It's nice and smooth. Okay. Aside from all the battle damage, which is, you know, inherent to the print and to the design of the helmet itself. But, uh, yeah, it's ready. It's ready for resin. I'm sorry, for primer. And once you primer that, you get the primer ready for paint. And you can go ahead and throw your base coat down, okay? Um, this is something that I am going to be working on soon. I'm going to be pushing this one pretty fast. Just because I've always wanted one of these. And uh, if you want to check out the pro progress on this, just go ahead and follow me on on uh, Instagram or Facebook on Fire Spray Pilot Cosplay and Props. And if you guys uh, want to look into more prop building or stuff like that, you know, just go ahead and follow the channel here. And uh, I'm pretty good with questions and answering questions and stuff, guys. So if you have questions on any of this stuff, I've been doing this for over 20 years, just hit me up with questions. All right. If you want to see anything, and I'm building that particular prop at the time. I'm going to go ahead. I'll, I'll start a video and I'll run it for you guys so you can check it out. So give me up with questions. All right. So the resin. There's a lot of resins out there. You can use a lot of stuff. Uh, I came across this, this resin recently. And it's called Rockstar. Okay. Rockstar resin. All right. So this is the uh, epoxy. And this is the hardener. All right. I found these on eBay. They're pretty inexpensive. Uh, the good thing that I like about it is that they advertise that the product will be fresh. Okay, they mix it for you fresh and send it to your house fresh, which is very important. Sometimes these resins, when you buy them, are sitting on the shelf for a while. When you get them, they're kind of like not doing what they're supposed to be doing, or they're, uh, you know, uh, the work time is not what it should be. Okay, um, these are our two part re uh, resin, obviously. Okay, so you have your, your hardener here. And then you have your resin, okay? So there's two parts, and what I do like about it is I usually use other resins that are two to one ratios. This is a one to one ratio. So it's one part this, and one part this, and that is by volume, not by weight. You just go ahead and mix half and half, or uh, one to one, which is what I have here. One part resin, and one part hardener, all right? Uh, work time with this, they advertise it about 30 minutes. I've worked with it. It gives me about a good 25 to 30 minutes before it starts getting very gooey. Now, I will tell you that 
other resins are very liquidy and they go on pretty liquidy. This is a, a more consistent type resin, so it's going to be a little gooier and thicker going on, okay? So that's, that's, that's pretty good, all right? You can get into the nooks and crannies and stuff like that. It doesn't run all over the place, so, you know, it, uh, it works pretty well. It does what it's supposed to do. Now, I will tell you what I do like about this resin is that the shore hardening of it is incredible, all right? I mean, I know you guys can't feel this, okay? But this is, I mean, what resin is supposed to be. This is a rock, guys. This is definitely going to help for strengthening the 3D parts. And, yes, this is a 3D print that looks like one solid cast piece. And, uh, I mean, as far as strengthening your cast and hardening this stuff, it's amazing. Okay, some of the resins remain... Uh, they keep some flexible properties to them and pliability this does not I mean this is what you want it to do I mean you want this thing to be you know very very hard if that's what you want it for okay which is that is exactly what I want it for here okay uh, I got some uh, dirt inside of this one sitting around here alright so materials that you're gonna need guys obviously you're gonna want some gloves alright if you touch this stuff it gets on you it's extremely sticky all right, you're gonna need a couple of cups to measure the stuff in, and then one mixing cup. All right, um, you need a little stir stick. You can use anything. All right, and then you're gonna need something to brush this stuff on with. All right, I just use these brushes. All right, these are uh, I get these at you know the WalMarts or Lowe's or whatever. I find the cheapest brushes that I can find. These are like two bucks. Right, once you use this stuff, it's gonna go into garbage. You can't use it again. All right. Uh, you can use different things to put this stuff on. Some people I know that they use the sticks to smear it and stuff like that. And I'll talk you guys through along the way. I just found that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little under the weather, but I just found that brushes are a little better. Okay, I prefer the brushes. Okay, so I use a big brush for the actual bigger areas, and I use the smaller brushes to get into some details. Um, the nooks and crannies, I, especially areas that I don't want to lose too much detail. Okay, because this stuff um, levels very well. And it is going to cover any imperfections, which is what you want. It's going to cover uh, any of those uh, printing lines. It's going to cover any divots or you know imperfections that you have in the cast or things that you didn't really want to work out. But at the same time, it may um, cover up some detail. So when you're working around detail parts, um, which these helmets don't have a lot of detail parts, but... If you're working on these areas here, okay, you don't want the uh, the resin to, you know, completely rise above this, and you're gonna keep it light, and you're gonna keep this, you know, area light of resin, so you don't cover those details. Um, I don't have a helmet that has a lot of details on it right now, but you guys know what I'm talking about. If there's a small print with a lot of detail, you might want to stick to this and keep the coats very very light, okay. With a uh, helmet, you can just go ahead and you know throw the coats on, do what you're gonna do, and then you can always sand this stuff down and make it very very smooth or bring the layer down if you need it to okay so again you need part a part b i already put them in here um if you want a little bit more working time which is what i do is i put a little bit more resin and a slight less hardener now i'm not talking about i'm still going to keep that one to one ratio going but i'll probably put like let's say 100 percent volume of one here and then i'll put about 90 percent volume here and that'll give me a little bit more working time and it keeps it a little less gooey i find all right so when you mix these things in, what you want to do is, uh, oh, I think that you guys saw that I have an aluminum plate here, all right? I learned this trick online from uh, Smooth On. They recommend doing this, and it makes sense. If you keep this, if you mix these into this container, you keep it here, it's a smaller volume container, and these two chemicals are going to start reacting, they're going to start heating up, okay? And the laws of thermodynamics are what they are, so... If you keep it in a small container here, it's going to start to heat up in here, and you'll see it smoking, and it'll probably start eating right through your cup. All right. So what you want to do is spread out the uh, the chemicals or the actual resin mix. You want to spread it out, and uh, the aluminum tends to go ahead and dissipate heat, and it keeps that uh, resin cool. All right. So it gives you that long working time. So just throw it into a uh, plate. This is basically a uh, plastic plate or paper plate that I have here with aluminum foil on the top okay uh, when you do mix these things you want to go ahead and mix the hardener first okay you want to put the hardener in there first all right and 
just go ahead and pour that in there and make sure you have it all in there I'll talk you guys through some of this stuff I'll try to keep this video a little short but you guys will get the understanding and the gist of it okay so I pour the hardener in there first all right and then you want to pour your resin in okay now when you pour your resin in just let that go in nice and slow all right try not to uh, just throw it in there and stuff like that just let it go in nice and slow and that'll start to prevent the formation of uh, a lot of bubbles okay I mean, you're probably gonna get a couple bubbles here and there but by pouring it in nice and slow less bubbles will tend to form okay so again you just use your little stirring stick here and you just bring it into the uh, mixing cup just let it do its thing and I know this is like watching uh, paint dry to you guys but I don't want to cut the video just yet because I want to show you guys one more thing before we get into the application of this thing And again, these are not just my recommendations, guys. These are actually the uh, manufacturer recommendations. Okay. And I'm just going to keep using this resin until I run out. And, uh, you know, see how it does. I mean, I like it so far. So I'll probably keep picking this up. I've used a lot of different resins, including XTC3D which is, is great resin also and I'll probably keep using it but different things for different applications you know so that's it it's all mixed in there so now what you want to do is and I know you guys can't see it but you want to give it a slow stir okay just a slow stir all right just like that nice and slow okay so getting it off the walls or what have you okay you want to give it a slow stir for about three minutes okay Another good thing about this resin, unlike some of the other stuff you use, especially fiberglass resin, okay? Fiberglass resin, you gotta use, uh, not only work in ventilated areas for that, and you can see, guys, hi, I'm not wearing a mask, okay? So, I'm sure this is putting out some kind of fumes, but I am outside, I am in a well-ventilated area, which is uh, part of what you're supposed to be doing. But if you're using, uh, fiberglass resin or even XTC 3D those things tend to have a very strong odor to them okay to where when you smell it you you might start getting a headache and stuff like that and that's just telling you that you really shouldn't be breathing that stuff in okay this stuff here is uh almost let's just I'm not gonna say odorless but it has a very low odor okay so and again I'm not gonna stick my face in there or anything like that but you know, just keep that slow stir going. And you can do that for about three to five minutes. Okay. And then once I'm done with that, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pour it. That reaction starting in here. Okay. So what you want to do is pour it in here into your uh, plate and spread it out. So I'll get back with you guys. All right, guys, uh, I'm back here. So I already went ahead and poured the resin into this. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it is in there. All right, and uh, something I just noticed, the last time I used this resin for the first time on that Iron Man helmet, uh, I'm down in Miami, but miraculously, we had a major cold front. You guys know what this uh, horrendous blizzard flew across the country, and uh, it was actually 45 degrees down here. And um, the last time I used it, I was out here, and it was pretty cold. So... It's warmer today it's about 70 degrees and the resin is a little bit the consistency is a little better so you guys know that obviously temperature and outside temperature is gonna affect how this stuff reacts so all right so here it is this is the helmet that I'm gonna be coating all right this is a uh, again just like this one okay this is a 3d printed helmet okay I've done all the work to it um, you know I've sanded it down as much as possible I've already put all the layers of Bondo on there cover any major areas that need to be covered and stuff like that but you know I still want to use the uh, resin here to get all these layer lines that may be there out of the way okay so here we go again you get this stuff 
put it on there and this isn't rocket science from this point forward guys i usually like start starting from the top down okay and you just start coding this stuff on there that's it okay just like that you just start coding it on okay and you try to be smooth with the application of it all right um don't get too crazy heavy all right don't uh don't add like a huge glob of this stuff okay you want a nice thin coat going all over this now what I have noticed is that most resins are okay with that but this particular one is very good it has excellent uh, self leveling qualities okay meaning that it'll go ahead and fill those holes and it'll fill those um, gaps and imperfections in your work or whatever you're doing but then it self levels very very well so after it fills those holes and those layer lines it self levels very well so that just equates to less work because anything that self self levels it just means that you don't have to sand as much okay and you'll sand less which is what you want right? you're trying to get rid of all the excess work here okay so that's it you know again it's not uh, anything that's too difficult I just uh, I was gonna be doing this today anyways and I wanted to uh, show you guys how I did this stuff so if you are I had somebody of a buddy of mine asked me or actually we were having a conversation it's like oh I don't like using two part stuff and it's complicated it's actually not that complicated okay so that's why I like making these videos and these, uh, I don't know if they're tutorials, but I like making these videos because sometimes people are a little apprehensive about picking up certain um, hobbies or using certain materials on their hobbies or whatever the case may be, okay? It's not that bad, guys. It's not that bad, okay? This is not stuff that is very difficult to work with or anything like that, okay? So just go ahead and pick some of this stuff up um you know i'm not gonna lie to you sometimes i use like you should i mean if you're not sure how this is gonna work for you or how it's gonna react on a particular part okay then you should run tests okay get a little scrap piece okay a print that you did or something maybe a print a failed print all right or a uh something resin that you may have picked up and you don't you know feel like you need to save it or you're gonna throw it away you're gonna chuck it anyway then Start using it. Start using the stuff on it. See how it reacts. See how it works. Practice. Okay. And like I said in my previous videos, if you do make a mistake or if you do destroy something, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. If you do make a mistake or if you do destroy a part or something goes wrong or, you know, it turns out that it's not what you wanted. It doesn't work out for you. It doesn't mean you have to throw this away, all right? This is completely still 100% salvageable, all right? After you, uh, and there is a line here, so I'm gonna go over it a second time. And this is the first layer. I usually do uh, two layers of this, and then I see where I'm at, okay? And that's why I went over that area again. But once it's completely dry, I'll go ahead and go over this whole helmet again, okay? But like I was saying, if you make a mistake or anything happens to this that you feel like, oh, it's done. All right, so let this thing dry. Let it cure. You sand all this crap off of it, and you start again. That's it. Okay, most of these things can be salvaged. All right, so this is what I'm telling you guys. I'm going to switch over. Okay, so I'm going to use a small brush, okay, and I'm going to get into these areas here. Okay, and what you don't want is runs, okay. So if you see a runaway run or anything like that, you're gonna to want to catch that right away. Okay, I just want to tell you that the uh, working in lighter layers, okay, or thinner layers, is always good. Okay. So this is one of some of those detail parts, right? So yeah, I'll coat them on the inside and stuff like that, but I'll be careful not to get too much resin in there or what have you. And I'll go ahead and. Uh, Keep the resin in there very light so it doesn't completely fill that 
because you want those details. Okay, you're gonna want those details later. And those are the famous signals on these helmets. And you guys all know who this is. It isn't Boba Fett. You guys wanna know? Huh? Yeah, so it's gonna be a Django. Django Fett. I'm actually looking forward to it. I wanted to put a nice Django together for a while now. Alright guys, so you get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and uh finish all this up. Okay. I'm not gonna sit here and do this whole thing with you on camera, but I'll finish this up and as soon as I'm done, I'll probably do the two layers. And once I'm done with it, look at that. It's amazing stuff, guys. You gotta get on it. Get on it. Alright, so once I'm done here, I'll go ahead and uh show you guys the finished product. Okay. I'll be back. Okay, and we're back. So that's it. Helm is done. You guys can see there. Alright. I've uh, completely coated it. Especially on the top here where it had the most imperfections. So what I did to, uh, it's getting kind of dark out, so I wanted to get back to you guys before it got dark. But what I did was I did one coat. Alright, and that was about maybe 20 minutes worth of work. Maybe 15 minutes or maybe 12 minutes of coating and I let it dry for about 10 minutes and then I put a second coat but only in the top okay which is mostly where the imperfections are going to be like I said um, we'll see how it does with one coat it looks pretty good okay I did a lot of sanding and prepping beforehand I put a second heavy coat here on the mandibles I'm trying to get that reflect that light again but uh, I can't get it but anyways right around this area here there was a uh, heavy print lines and stuff that I sanded and still I felt it needed more work so it's here as well let me see if I can get those there but no can't get it but you guys know what I'm talking about so I just put a little extra on the uh, parts that I felt like needed it and that's it guys okay uh, again here in the plate uh, it's still again it's pretty gooey but still workable okay and it's been about 25 minutes okay so this stuff will work on plastic wood metal I think just about any material you can think of but all right so again if you have any questions uh, hit me up uh, get this little spot here and again I don't know if you guys can tell but it's pretty level it looks really good and self-leveling uh, quality of this stuff is is excellent. So, all right, guys. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'll try to post some more videos uh, as I go. I'll be painting this thing, you know, chrome first, and then I'll be doing the rest of the colors on it. It's about six different colors, or that's not call it colors, but paint steps, including the primer and the base coats and stuff like that. But all right, so if you have any questions, hit me up. Let me know. Oh, Avatar. Wow. Woof. Saw that thing a couple days ago. Uh, if you're an Avatar fan, you won't be disappointed. Check it out. I saw it in 3D. You're going to want to watch it in 3D. Okay, it's uh, a masterpiece of a movie. James Cameron, he did it. Did a great job on it. You won't be disappointed, guys. So check it out if you get a chance. All right, that's it. Thanks again for watching, guys. And y'all be easy. Take care.